Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, interviewing entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next guest has walked the runways of New York's Fashion Week, has been featured on the Today Show, and has been showcased in Ultra Beauty and Gap Body campaigns. Please welcome the founder of Fighting Pretty, Kara Scaffoldstad. Kara, thank you so much for joining me on my show. Uh, I really do appreciate you coming over and, and telling us about your nonprofit, Fighting Pretty. So please, I would love to kind of just get a, a, an overview of kind of your background and your nonprofit. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It is such a pleasure to be here and share my story. Um, yeah, so I am originally from New Jersey. Uh, you could take the girl out of Jersey, but you can't take the Jersey out of her. Um, and so originally from New Jersey, um, went to school and actually majored in marketing. And so I feel like most people never major in what they actually end up in. But I always had an interest in kind of being creative, but also having that kind of strategic outlook on everything. Um, so my first job out of school, I worked at um, Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. It was very sexy. Nice. Um, and so, you know, that was in New Jersey. It was right mm -hmm. out of school. But I was an arm's reach away from New York City mm -hmm. and was dying to work in New York. And so... Um, I got a job at Low Worldwide, which is an advertising agency, and my first account was actually the Got Milk account. Oh, interesting. Nice. Yeah, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. That sounds fun. Yeah, so, you know, I kind of got thrown into, you know, all the things that people want to do in advertising. You're right, working right. with celebrities, and you're, you know, doing all the creative process, and, you know, working until the middle of the night to get all that stuff done. Yeah. Of course, that's what you do in your 20s. <laughs> grind, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was definitely the grind. And it was fantastic. It taught me so much about project management and how to manage stakeholders nice. and, mm -hmm. you know, deal with all these crazy difficult personalities, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. learning really how to be creative. And so, um, yeah, worked in advertising for a couple years and then went over actually still in advertising. I worked on Procter & Gamble brands. Oh, okay. Also really sexy brands, Metamucil yeah. and pepto -Bismol. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that hits me right there in the intestines for sure. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but the good thing about working for clients like Procter & Gamble is mm -hmm. they really give you kind of the foundational aspect of what branding and marketing is all about. Oh, okay. So yeah. everything is tested through focus groups and I mean, the process is rigorous, but it's really, really great for so early in your career. Um, and so I was kind of climbing the corporate ladder at that, at that time. I was mm -hmm. in my mid twenties, loving living in New York city and working there and making friends and, you know, dating and going out drinking and doing all the things that yeah. 20 year olds do. Oh, the good old days. Oh, the good old days. <laughs> and um, it was at 26 years old that mm -hmm. I was actually diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh. And so yeah. it obviously turned my world upside down and inside out and gave me a completely different perspective on my life. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely a turning point in not only my life, but in my career as well. Um, so I continued at this advertising agency publicist at that point I was at publicist and, um, worked, started working on Garnier, which was in the beauty realm. Yeah. And so it was this really crazy juxt juxtaposition for me personally, because at, right at that point I was losing my hair. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, going through this crazy transition in my personal life, but right. also excelling in my career and working on this fabulous brand that's beauty and hair right. and yeah. makeup and all the things. Um, and meanwhile, I was losing my eyelashes and my hair yeah, and all tough. the things. Yeah. Um, so it was just definitely a crazy experience, but it was amazing. And I learned so much at that time in my life. Um, and really it was at that 
time when I was losing my hair and getting scars and all the things that I realized that feeling beautiful was something that wasn't just so outwardly, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Vain. Mm -hmm. It was really Mm -hmm. something about that when you look good, you feel good. Yeah, And sometimes you have to fake it till you make it, especially when you're bald. Definitely. (laughs) So, um, so at the time, I was kind of fighting pretty, if you will. And someone oh, okay. gave me a little pair of mini pink boxing gloves as a mm. reminder to stay strong. And so I took those boxing gloves and, you know, put on some hot pink lipstick and was feeling strong and beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So um, after that, I, you know, it was a couple years after my diagnosis mm-hmm. and I was still working in marketing. At this time, I had moved on to Bloomberg. I'd been recruited by an old boss of mine. Nice. But I knew I really wanted to help other people. And so I started a nonprofit. I didn't know what to call it. I didn't know what I wanted to do. But all I knew is I wanted to help women battling cancer feel strong and beautiful. Nice. So I started a nonprofit. I called it Fighting Pretty. I created a Facebook page and hoped for the best. (laughs) Man. That sounds... Now... (laughs) Now, fighting pretty. So, can you can you give me a little background? What is it that you guys do now? Sure. So, again, I originated fighting pretty in an effort to help women feel strong and beautiful mm-hmm. while they're mm-hmm. battling cancer. So, I realized through my journey that it was all about strength and beauty, and that is what helped me change my perspective on the treatment and the emotional side effects that I was going through. So, what I really started doing was creating these pretty packages. Okay. So I would put in items that made women feel like women, not like Mm. cancer patients. Mm. Lipstick, a fun scarf, accessories, and of course, a pair of mini pink boxing gloves as a reminder to stay strong. Oh, that's great. That's great. And you know, I'm not sure, uh, you know, for those folks at home, but you know, one of my oldest sisters, my oldest sister, uh, she was in fact diagnosed with cancer at a pretty young age as well. And, you know, something like this was, was never around, if I recall correctly. I don't remember anything like this. And I do remember my sister going through that process of losing her hair. And, and I remember taking the clippers of my own scalp, you know, and, and making sure we, we did it in unison. But th- I never never really thought, you know, that deep into it that, you know, um, emotionally, right? How are, you, how are you feeling as well? Because you're going through a lot, right? Your body's changing. So how did that, you know, that change, how did that affect your career, Yeah, I mean, it definitely, just going through cancer, especially at such a young age where I didn't really know anyone else my age Mm -hmm. that was going through this type of experience, it made me realize that I needed to not only share my story, but to help inspire other women like me that they're not alone. And that Mm. even if it's just one woman right here who understands what they're going through, and can remind them that they are strong and beautiful, whether or not they have hair or breasts or eyelashes or ovaries or mm-hmm. anything, they are still a beautiful, strong, amazing woman. And that's what Fighting Pretty is all about. Nice. And so I really made it as part of my kind of lifelong mission to help all people battling cancer to remind themselves that they are strong. And of mm. course, for women to remind them that they are beautiful. And and so, what exactly is in these packages to, to kind of help uh, reinforce that message? Yeah. So the main items in there are really the boxing gloves and the lipstick. Okay. And things have changed a little bit with COVID. So mm. we used to send out pretty packages that we created ourselves. Someone would donate to us. We'd send it out. You know, say to your sister gotcha. who was in her treatment. Mm-hmm. Now with COVID, we've had to shift a little bit. So we are actually sending just lipstick and gloves to women that are currently in cancer treatment that are battling at hospitals right now. So we're partnering with hospitals. However, we have a make your own pretty package on our website at fightingpretty.org that you can now kind of just select your own items for the person you love. Oh, nice. You make it a pretty package and we send it on for you. That's cool. That is great. Now, now. If I recall correctly, your Fighting Pretty um, brand has actually been on some pretty big, you know, different uh, marketing things like the Today Show. And and let's talk about that a little bit. How did that happen? 
Yeah, so it really all goes back to the mission. Okay. I was in a wedding for my girlfriend, Becca. She okay. actually worked with me at Publicis mm. in New York. She actually married one of my very best friends, Justin, who I went to high school with. Okay. And so I was in their wedding, and at Becca's shower, there was another girl who was in the bridal party. She said, my mom is going through breast cancer. Mm. You know, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. We talked, and I said, can you please send me your mom's address? I want to send her a pretty package. Yeah. So I sent her a pretty package, gosh, back in 2014. And I got a call, or actually a message through Facebook. Hey, Cara, do you remember me? I was in the bridal party with you at Becca's wedding. Mm -hmm. My mom absolutely loved your pretty package four years ago. Mm -hmm. And I am now the senior producer on the Today Show. I want (laughs) to highlight your efforts because... This is so important. My mom loved it so much, and you're really making such an impact. That's amazing. Talk about paying it forward, right? And yeah. and all that provided was you as a larger reach to even do more. Right? Exactly. You know, like Jonas Salk, the, the great the great quote from Jonas Salk, right? <laughs> the old uh, what, what does it say? Uh, the opportunity for or the the job the reward for a job well done is the opportunity to do more. Oh right? gosh, yeah. That's just that's just it right there. <laughs> now I think one of the things that you've been kind of talking about, um, you know, kind of organically and highlighted that is so important for the listeners at home to kind of and I'd love to kind of talk th- about this a little bit more is, is the networking. Mm-hmm. How important was your network in building the Fighting Pretty brand? Yeah, so even going right back to you know, when I said I wanted to create a nonprofit, I didn't know what to call it and I yeah. didn't know what to do with it. I just knew I wanted to help women battling cancer feel yeah. strong and beautiful. So my first tactic was I created a Facebook page mm. in 2013 with a really bad logo that I created by myself, <laughs> probably in PowerPoint. And, but my mission was clear. And so I had a question that said do you know someone battling cancer that needs to feel strong and beautiful Mm. contact me and we'll send her a pretty package and it was everyone within just my Facebook network of all my friends and family from New Jersey all the people I went to high school and college with and little by little I got 50 requests in one month and I wasn't fundraising. I wasn't doing anything. Wow. I, this was just going to be a fun little activity for right. me. Oh, okay. And then little by little, people came out of the woodwork. There was this wonderful girl, woman, Jean Day. I went mm-hmm. to high school with her, hadn't talked to her since the year 2000. Mm-hmm. She's like, hey, I work for a, a lawyer's office. They do nonprofit work. Do you need a pro bono lawyer? Yes. Oh, wow. My old clients at Garnier. Hey, can you take some donated lipstick for your pretty packages? Yes. <laughs> then everyone's coming out. How can I just donate to you so you can wow. send a pretty package to someone I don't know? I mean, it was such an organic yeah. n- way of networking that I just simply asked the question and and pulled on all the people that I'd ever met yeah. in high school, in college, in my career, and they all came out of the woodwork to support this amazing mission. Yeah, that's that's incredible. And I feel like there has to be some pretty phenomenal stories that you've, you know, some really engaging and inspiring and uplifting stories. What would you say is, is one of your favorite kind of things about, you know, starting the Fighting Pretty brand and where, where you've been today? What can you say is one of those most highlighting moments for you? I think the, the best moments are always when I hear or I get a thank you note or a post on Instagram or Mm -hmm. a a private message through Facebook or just someone that says this pretty package, these gloves came at the right time Mm -hmm. for me. And it's, it's definitely not a formula. We do not make sure we send them pretty packages Mm -hmm. when they're diagnosed or after they go through surgery or whatever. We send it whenever we get the request because the best thing about fighting pretty is you need to be reminded that you're strong and beautiful, whether you're just newly diagnosed, whether you're in the middle of treatment, or you are five to ten years out of treatment. Mm. It, it is still relevant all yes. along the way. And I, I think that, you know, I've, we've been doing Fighting Pretty now since 2013. Okay. 
And even just last week, we got another thank you that said, everything in this box, when I first got it, I thought I didn't really deserve it. I just had a lumpectomy. And, you know, I know there are other women out there who are going through more extensive treatment than me. Mm. And then she went back in for a scan a couple weeks later, and she came out to be fine, but she was so scared. Yeah. yeah. And she came home, and she looked at those gloves, and she's like, now I understand why they mean so much, because they're a constant reminder that I'm strong, I'm beautiful, and that I can get through this. Man, that is, that is so empowerful, impactful uh, for the individuals that receive it. I know I actually uh, had the opportunity to send one of my cousins one of your packages before as well. And those, those things are, it's just very meaningful. Mm -hmm. So, so running, running a small, uh, a nonprofit, right? What are some of the difficulties that you see as, as the, the founder of Founding Pretty and running this thing since 2013? What are some of the difficulties you ran into? I think, you know, a nonprofit is not only a startup, but it's a nonprofit. So yep. you kind of have two zingers against you. But the best thing is, is there's a clear mission. And I will say that the most important thing is to have a clear mission. Um, but I think the, the most challenging piece of this is really the structure behind the nonprofit is figuring okay. out, you know, how to build that foundational donor base, how to stay really communicative with your donors, yeah. with your recipients. and you know, not really having the employees or the staff or the people to do it with you um, because the money is always so limited. It's just a constant up to uphill battle with finances. Yeah. Um, especially with a nonprofit like Fighting Pretty because we are not taking the funding and giving it out to research or giving it out to another effort. We actually have hard costs like products that we have to, pay for in order to then provide to um, cancer patients. So, you know, I think, I think the infrastructure piece is always the hardest. I think also building a really good board and keeping them engaged and keeping volunteers engaged is also a really big challenge. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also always such an exciting adventure because you never know what opportunity is also around the next corner. Yeah, definitely. And one of the things you were mentioning briefly is, you know, starting this nonprofit and, and having the help. Who currently helps you and how does how does that work? Yeah, so we we have a very dedicated board now. Um, it took a couple of years to do that, okay. especially because, again, it all goes back to your network. You know, yeah. the first board, all the board members were my mom, my sister, okay. you know, my couple best friends from high school mm -hmm. and people that I knew that loved me yeah. and would do anything for me. Um, and now we've finally gotten to a board where we have folks that, you know, I haven't known since I was in sixth grade mm. and, you know, they are really, really talented professionals with their own networks that mm. can help us continue to build awareness and build on our infrastructure and operations, et cetera. Um, in addition for the first gosh, Five years, mm -hmm. we never had anyone that was committed, meaning we're not, we didn't pay anyone. It was simply me and friends and volunteers to put pretty packages together, to send out emails and all that. Yeah. Now we actually have three people on staff. Oh, wow. Okay. So we have one director of community and outreach mm -hmm. who really helps us work with the hospitals to get the materials to help their patients gotcha. feel strong and beautiful. And we have a social media manager and an operations manager. Oh, wow. So the operations manager really is helping to deliver on our promise. We say we're going to send you something and we need someone physically to do it. Right. And then our social media manager slash marketing kind of content manager. Um, she's really out there engaging with all the women out there who are fighting pretty nice. on a daily basis. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a pretty, that <laughs> pretty big team there. It yeah. seems like you guys grow. Now, how many packages have you guys sent out? Do you know? So over the course of, gosh, these seven years, almost eight years, we have impacted over 15,000 women wow. in 50 wow. U.S. states, and I think we're up to 17 countries globally. Wow. So. That is incredible. Yes. And I forgot to mention in the staff, we do have me. I am the executive director the president, 
the scheduler, the admin, <laughs> every, everything else that can't get All done within those assigned. other three people. Um, oh, yeah. And I also have a full-time job. <laughs> oh, man. And so, yeah, it, it sounds like, you know, your career continued to progress even though you started this nonprofit. How has, you know, juggling a, a full-time career and, and, and running a small, uh, you know, nonprofit, how does – how is that gone? Is that difficult? Is it easy? How, yeah, how you- so it's, you know, some days it's really easy and it's amazing. And other mm-hmm. days it's really difficult because I feel like my heart is pulled in two different directions. Mm-hmm. Um, one is the, is working as the marketing manager for OHSU Night Cancer Institute. And mm-hmm. I couldn't be more proud to work for an organization that is really paving the way yeah. for cancer care in Oregon. Um, and it's, it's incredible. However, you know, there are other times where I think about fighting pretty and I think about how much fighting pretty needs my time to grow. Mm -hmm. And I just simply can't give it because I need to pay myself money, you know, and I just can't do that at fighting pretty. So, you know, it's a constant struggle for sure, but I think eventually we will figure out, you know, a solution where, you know, it works on both ends. Yeah. So, yeah. So you, you continue to move forward, right? You continue to grow. What continues to motivate you? I think it's, I honestly think it's those letters, those thank you notes mm. from the women that are impacted every single day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're, especially with COVID, it was such a scary time to say, well, Initially, we were creating these pretty packages. We had mm-hmm. big community events and volunteers who would come and put these packages together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, donations were coming through because we were doing events and all sorts of things that mm-hmm. involved the community. Well, when COVID hit, just like everyone else, yeah. everything came to a halting, screeching stop. Yep. So we really brainstormed about how we could help cancer patients especially now when they're going through treatments and surgeries alone, they can't bring anybody in with them. Yeah. That's tough. And the healthcare heroes, the nurses, the infusion nurses and all of them, not only are they covered in head to toe more, you know, PPE than ever before, Mm -hmm. but they also are feeling horrible for these patients that they can't even rub their shoulder anymore, that they used to be able to get personal with their own patients. Mm -hmm. So fighting pretty kind of stepped in with this. Well, hey, nurses, let us help you by giving your patients something really small, like a Mm -hmm. pair of gloves and a lipstick and a little note that says you are strong and beautiful. And hey, patient, when you're all by yourself, because you can't have anyone there with you, Mm -hmm. here are some things to remind yourself that you feel strong and beautiful. Right. So we kind of shifted. And I think the fact that Fighting Pretty has been really nimble since day one, especially with all these crazy events that come through with today's show and fashion week and collaborations here and there with silver moon brewing and bend. I mean, all sorts of things that are really kind of fun and exciting. And let's, let's, let's talk about that. What, what is this collaboration with silver moon? (laughs) Uh, You you had me at brewing. So let's, let's talk about that. What, what is this collaboration? Yeah. So last year, silver moon brewing actually reached out to our team about their F cancer beer. So every year, oh, I'm liking yes, this already. It is so Continue, tell me more. Bomb. So <laughs> last year they came out and said, "Hey, we have this F cancer beer. We normally yep. choose cancer organizations where we give a percentage of the proceeds." Mm-hmm. And so actually, for the Night Cancer Institute, they're doing it for them as well. Oh, so nice! It's, it's kind of a, a double, you know, double effort there. Nice. Um, and so what they do is for every every um, every year, excuse me. They design a new can that mm-hmm. has all cancer survivor names on them. Oh, wow. So for a minimum, I believe, of $20, you can make a donation to get your name on the can, mm-hmm. and you can select Fighting Pretty or Night Cancer Institute Oh, that's cool. to get your name on there. And oh, then that cool. nonprofit gets that money. And so in May, they then launch the beer. Your name is on it, so my beer, my name was on it last year. Nice. And, you know, normally they do a big launch party. I don't know that they'll do that again, right. you know, yeah. with COVID, but it's super good, super awesome. The beer is amazing. It's a really yummy IPA. Ooh. And last year, Silver Moon donated over $10,000 to Fighting Pretty. Wow, that's so, great. And that's, that's just great. Fighting Pretty. They're doing this for other organizations, too. Oh, that's awesome. So, 
Yeah. That's awesome. So besides, so obviously purchasing some beer is one way to get involved, (laughs) right? What are other ways that people at home can get involved with Fighting Pretty, either that donating or volunteering time? What, What can they do? Yeah, so we have just launched a fight club. Which oh, if you again, talking to me, talk exactly. to me. Exactly. <laughs> so if you donate $10 a month, okay. you become a recurring donor and you join the Fighting Pretty Fight Club. Okay. And so every quarter there will be different things that are available just to the Fight Club members. Mm. But the best part about it is that just $10 helps one woman battling cancer feel strong and mm. beautiful. So it's a no brainer. $10 you could spend on two coffees at Starbucks, maybe even one and a half. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, and also for $10, you can literally change a woman's life. So feels like a no brainer to me. So where, where, where would they go? Where's your website? How do they do this? Yeah. So the other thing is you could donate at at fightingpretty.org and join the fight club. But if you know someone battling cancer Mm -hmm. and you want to help her feel strong and beautiful You can also create your own pretty package for her. Oh, yeah. Head on over to fightingpretty.org and select a slew of amazing products. Um, We have new merch coming out every couple months. Nice. So it's just very inspiring, really beautiful stuff, and it's just a way to to remind her she is strong and beautiful. Love it. Love it. Now, 13 years, or 2013, so... We're almost, almost seven, almost seven years seven, in eight. now. Yeah. So looking back on everything, what, what advice would you give your younger self? Gosh, what advice would I give my younger self? I think from, from the cancer perspective, I would say, take it one day at a time. Just mm. be patient. Mm. Don't get yourself wrapped up in worry because it's yeah. so easy to do that as a cancer patient. As you know, a nonprofit founder and professional marketing professional, I would say be nimble Mm. and don't get so set in what you think is going to happen. Network your butt off. Yes. Meet as many people as you can and just be a sponge. Learn as much as you can about as much as you can. Yes. Because just because you might start out in marketing You know, I'm still doing marketing to this day, but I've all of a sudden become a philanthropist. And I've also become, you know, an operations director. And I've built websites now, and I've built communities, and I'm a content expert. I Mm. mean, we have over 15,000 women in our network that we are Mm. constantly engaging with and teaching and, you know, corralling so that they can all meet each other. That's incredible. So... You know, it's not just what you think your career will be. Yeah. You know, someone once told me, the world will tell you what you should do. Yeah. And I so believe in that. Yeah. You know, the world told me somehow that I needed to help women feel strong and beautiful. And 15,000 women later, Mm. I believe that that was the right decision. And that's only 15,000 women out of all the women diagnosed with cancer. We have a big job to do. Yeah. And so we're just getting started. That's incredible. Kara, thank you again so much for joining me today on my show. For those that are at home, please visit me on the shades of e.com. Thank you and good night.